Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray No Hood Garage. So today we're pulling the edge and we're finally getting this thing out. Uh, I had Frank come over the other day, help me take the hood off. We were going to pull it out the other day, but this stupid piston decided to commit treason and only lift like a quarter of the weight up. So I got a new piston and we will be able to pull this engine out. I got this plate. That's why the chains are on there because we had the chain set up. This thing was supposed to come. It didn't. Piston committed treason. Now we got this plate. We're going to pull off the valley cover and we're going to swap it out with this plate. And then we get this engine out. Let's get into it. All right, guys, if you're pulling your valley cover off, it is a 13 millimeter socket. I'm going to use an impact gun, just zip, 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 zip. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's 10 bolts holding that on, so nice and easy. Unbolt it, save the bolts, squirrel it away somewhere, and we'll be golden. Okay, so down there you got a couple sensors. Not sure how that one comes off yet, but you should have the same thing over here. No big deal. Let's see if we can just unplug them and get them disconnected. All right, guys, got the knock sensor wires out. That's what's inside. Nothing crazy. So if you got fat fingers and you're trying to get in there to disconnect these things, you might want to get a pair of pliers. I used two thick boy screwdrivers there and there. And what you got to do is you got to press this the side in to disconnect it. And being that I had no way to get my fingers in there, I guess it just separates it enough. There's two little hooks down the top and bottom there that hook around that white thing. So no big deal, but got this out of the way. See if we get the valley cover off the rest of the way. All right guys, gonna take these uh, knock sensors out. These are a uh, 22 millimeter socket. So just breaker free, nice and easy. We're gonna just get this guy. Oh, there it goes. That should be up and out. <clears throat> And there's our knock sensor. There's two of these, take them out. This one's ready to go. There we go, we got both of them. And now our valley cover should come off. There it goes, it's got a little goop on it. Seems like, Let's see, yep. There's a little rubber gasket down at the bottom that's kind of holding it in. Let's see if I can kind of get it, kind of get it from this side too. Bring it straight up. Come on, douchebag. Okay. All right, so if you can tell, there's little rubber grommets down there, or gaskets, wherever they are. Probably both. But uh, yeah, they fight you a little bit, so try and bring this thing straight up. Or at least like pick this side up a little bit and then try and get it. So, no big deal. Oh, geez. So yeah, that's the underneath. Let's put this somewhere. Put it right there. And now we kind of got to the guts of the engine here. With the power of the internet, just like that. And our lifter plate is in. And now we could push the car out in the driveway and start pulling this engine right after I change that piston. And uh, one other thing real quick. I don't know if you can see right there, but there's a stud for the motor mount. Here's the bolt. These bolts are 18 millimeters. Now you have two options of this. You could take out just the top ones and then you got some on the bottom. So I already took these out. Uh, I just took the top off uh, when we were trying to lift it the other day. It was going up fine, so take these off. And also, I already took it off, but there were some bolts on the back here. These tiny little bitty, itty bitty bolts. They're literally maybe a half inch long, maybe a little longer than that. Those are for part of the wiring harness. There's a ground back there, and there's also a clip for the wiring harness. As you can see right there, there, that little bracket. So that is held on by two bolts, just on the back of the engine block. There's, just like the front, there's a couple holes here, but on the back side, get those off, or you're gonna be yanking your wiring harness. But for the most part, the wiring harness came out to the driver's side. It just loops all the way around. So everything from the exhaust, the oxygen sensors, the transmission sensors, they all come back to this main guy here so let's get that out of the way and uh start taking this thing apart there it goes 
there, baby. All right, guys, we did it. We got the engine out. Just gotta remove my brand new spec clutch, which is relatively looking new. So yeah, we'll get this out and uh, lower the motor down and put it on the engine stand over there. All right, guys, I'm gonna take the clutch off. This just happens to be a 516 Allen. I don't know what the stock one is anymore because it's been so long, but keep these because you don't want your clutch falling out. And also when you do these bolts, Loosen them slowly around because there is spring tension on there. You don't want to crack your clutch. And keeping this thing in will prevent your clutch from dropping. Be very careful doing this because we're going to reuse this since it basically looks brand new. And uh, yeah, we'll get this off. Yeah, guys, uh, the engine wants to spin when you want to try and uh, disconnect the clutch. So you can wedge something through the front here, just under the oil pan. Yeah, just under the oil pan just to prevent the right there there's a screwdriver or a little pry bar just stop the engine from spinning because uh it's spinning on me and the impact gun is not strong enough to get the bolts off got my breaker bar my allen key we'll see if we can break this thing free one loose two loose and six loose there we go all right so i was able to get those started And the clutch is out. Mm -hmm. Got a hot spot on the flywheel. I uh, don't know if that's good or bad. It doesn't feel like it's deviated or anything, but may want to consider taking this out and replacing it. But we'll see. Time to get these little bolts off. These things are tiny. They're a pain in the dick. And this flywheel is pretty heavy. I don't think this is the aluminum job. We'll tell you the size of them in a minute. And we'll get to taking this off. I'm pretty sure they're Loctited on, so you may need a breaker bar for these. Alright guys, these bolts are a 15 millimeter. It's a little loose, but a 9 16 won't fit and a 5 8 is too big, so 15 millimeter. I'm gonna use the impact gun to get this off. Now watch out, this thing is heavy and it will drop, so keep a hand on it. And good luck. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Hitting it with a hammer back and forth a little bit, wiggles, comes right out. All right guys, got cold out. So the engine's out, as you can tell. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. Just give you a little breakdown on probably how I'm going to 
break down the next few videos. First one, probably gonna concentrate more on getting the valve covers off, getting the rocker arms and the lifters and the push rods out, and getting the harmonic balancer off and getting this front cover off, and then start going more into the guts of the engine, like the oil pump, getting the cam out. The rear main seal is probably gonna have to wait until I get it off this engine stand. And also I'm gonna clean the shit out of this thing to make it nice and purdy so when it goes back in it looks presentable. I wanna figure out what I'm gonna do about this because I got this oil filter adapter to plug into the oil pressure sensor. Just real quick looking around, it I, maybe I could put it here, take this plug and put it up in here somehow. That looks like it goes into the oil system because my skid plate will hit this. I don't know if they make smaller filters, but we're gonna figure that out as we go. And then we'll hopefully start getting this engine together. God, it's fucking cold. If you're from Florida, enjoy your time in Florida. Put it that way. Uh, just one little uh, word of advice to use this Harbor Freight engine mount. The way the hook goes in, it wants to spin the engine. So what I did to combat that was I took a Bungee cord, uh, we just wrapped it around here and then just hooked it to this engine hoist mount. So that kept the engine straight. So when I was pulling it up, it didn't want to twist. So yeah, that does it for this video. And, uh, and I'm gonna break the engine tear down itself into multiple parts, as I just explained a little earlier. And then when we put it back together and it's slow and steady, do it right. See you in a couple days with the next new video. And uh, you know, thanks for the, uh, Got 31 subscribers now, 1900 views, and and like 130 something watch hours. Like that's awesome, you know. So keep it up, like, subscribe. You know the deal. And I'll see you in the next one. Out.